This group had an enormous influence on the rock and roll genre during the start of the 50s. This group was responsible for numerous of highly successful songs, including the original version of The Twist, which sparked the early dance craze of the 60s. The centerpiece of today's video is all about the Midnighters. Now, before we start, let's be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and push that notification bell to be sure you won't miss out on any more uploads. Now, without further ado, let's cue that intro. The story begins at Dunbar High School in Detroit, Michigan in 1952, when the group was known as the Four Falcons. Shortly after, the group changed its name to the Warriors due to another Detroit-based group named the Falcons. The group was claimed to have included Henry Booth, Charles Sutton, Levi Stubbs, Jackie Wilson, and guitarist Alonzo Tucker in late 1950 and early 1951. The group's big break came in November of 1951 when they joined an amateur talent contest at the Paradise Theater. Johnny Otis, who was enjoying a string of 13 straight R&B hits, also serving as a talent scout for King and Federal Records. Here at the talent contest is where he discovered the group. Otis suggested the group as well as, as Little Willie John and Jackie Wilson two label executives. Now at this time, groups like the Orioles, the Clovers, and the Five Keys was the hottest craze in R&B. Therefore, King and federal executives chose to pass on John and Wilson to sign the group. Tucker, Booth, Sutton, along with Lawson Smith and Sonny Woods was all members of the group at this time. The group's debut record was written by Otis, which was Every Beat of My Heart. In every beat of my heart. This song became a major hit for Gladys Knight and the Pips. The group's image was designed to resemble the Orioles. By 1953, the group approach has shifted when Lawson Smith was drafted into the military and was replaced by a 16-year-old vocalist named Hank Ballard. Ballard at the time was highly influenced by Clyde McFadder when he was a member of the Dominoes. Ballard soon became lead singer and he brought in a new sound to the group by bringing in a hard gospel edge and a suitcase full of rhythm charts frequently raunchy songs. The group's first look at this new sound was the song, Get It. Oh baby, get, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, you know I wanna see. In early 1954, the group released a single, Work With Me Annie. Work with me Annie, ooh -wee. work with me Annie. Now, as this song began to gain momentum in early 1954, the group changed their name to the Midnighters to avoid confusion with the group, the Five Royals. For the rest of 1954, the group released singles such as Sexy Ways, and he had a baby. Annie's Aunt Fanny. In 1955, the group released two more singles with Henry's Got Flat Feet. Henry Got Flat Feet, can't dance no more. <laughs> and It's Lovely Baby. The group had no further hits for approximately three and a half years. And during this time, personnel changed with Smith returning to the group from the military to replace Sutton, Norman Thrasher replacing Sonny Woods, and guitarist Kyle Green 
replaced Arthur Porter, who replaced Alonzo Tucker earlier that year. After departing, Alonzo Tucker became a successful independent songwriter, composing songs for Jackie Wilson, The Shy Lights, and The Animals, to name a few. Around this time, the group issued many songs, but none of them was hits. Meanwhile, the group record label King Records became more interested in the Famous Flames, a powerful new vocal group from Georgia who was heavily influenced by the Midnighters. In 1959, the group changed its name to Hank Ballard and the Midnighters. That same year, they released three hits with Teardrops on Your Letter. Made me realize every word you wrote was true. That you. Now, this song became the group's first success in four years, re establishing the group's status as a hit making powerhouse. Now, this song was followed by The Twist. Come on, baby. Too much Come on, baby. Even though this song was great with the Midnighters, the song became a bigger hit that next year with Chubby Checker covered it. The group's last charted single of 1959 with the song Kansas City. Now, although Checker's cover of The Twist was a larger hit for him, the group didn't let that hold him back. In 1960, the group issued four singles as well as a re-released version of The Twist, which helped the group's other singles acquire success with the songs The Coffee Grind, Everybody. Doing that coffee grind. Finger Poppin' Time, And let's go. From Put on your red dress. In 1961, the group released more singles with The Hoochie Coochie Cool, the Hoochie -coochie -coo. Just watching in the kitchen. Let's Go Again. The Continental Walk. The Switcheroo. The Float. Nothing but good. And keep on dancing. In 1962, the group had his last charted single with the song Do You Know How to Twist? Everybody is learning how to put on a tight dress, we on our way. By the early 1960s, the group music and popularity had dried up, prompting its disbandment. Now, the group was inducted into the Vocal Group Hall of Fame in 1999, the Michigan Rock and Roll Legends Hall of Fame in 2010, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2012, and the Rhythm and Blues Hall of Fame in 2015. Now, before we go, I have a few questions for you guys. Would you like to see a video on Hank Ballard? Also, what is your favorite song for the Midnighters?